Welcome back to another video. Today it's going to be slightly different, a little bit more off the cuff. We're going to be going down a few lanes and I'm just going to be talking over it. Testing out a few new bits of kit, such as my quad lock action cam mount and my new Insta360 camera. So let's get going. So bear with me while I ramble over this trip back a few weeks ago with Jack Fielder very kind of him and Katie to take us out and lead us on some new lanes that we haven't done before on the edge of the moors near to us. It was a wet and rainy Saturday but it was great fun. As you can see ahead there in their trusty old military 110 with a soft top called Skippy. With it being Devon, obviously you get some livestock on the road. Here is the quadlock mount I was talking about earlier. I'm going to be using it for the inside shots from the GoPro. Really nice, neat little bit of kit. And here is my Insta360. I've attached it to the bumper. You can hardly see where it goes. There is a pole that extends out. And it was a good day to test the sort of angles and editing software. As I'm going to be using it for work as well. It's lovely to be able to sort of re-angle the shot as you're moving and I do just want to state that I did buy this and it is not a sponsored video. Jack entering a bit of a dip there and tackling it with ease through the water and now it's Boris's turn. Not too bad at all, a little bit of a steep exit but just nothing. This must have been an old railway or road path, there's lots of history in this area. As you can see in the distance, Dartmoor up in the background, it is a really, really beautiful spot. At this point it's a little while since I've been laning really in Boris in the local area. Um, I'm about 40 minutes from where I used to live and I definitely did um, sort of use up those lanes quite a bit. The ones on the edge of the moor as well, they, you know, if you do a lot of laning uh, it becomes quite uh, sort of normal and you get a little bit used to it. So it was really nice to explore with Jack leading us round. It's nice to just be outside exploring a new area and seeing new sites. This time I had actually aired down probably to about 20 psi. For a long time I had the tyres up at about 48 and I discovered in Wales on some wet grass that having your tyres like that means you get very, very stuck very quickly. So. Having them down at this sort of uh, PSI, I think it's a bit much to sort of air down every time you go laning, but it just means that the potholes, the ride is much nicer and you have a bit more grip as well. So right here, what we're doing is heading over the moors here on the main road. This is an area called Cadover Bridge above Plymouth near where we live. And as you can see, the rain is still there, but the blue sky is out as well. Skippy in the distance leading us as normal and we're heading over towards Tavistock where the next set of lanes are. Here you can really see the Insta360 and how it works. It's just a sort of extendable fishing rod with a camera on the end. I'm sure you've seen it in many other videos. It's been a long time coming for me, it's something I've really wanted for a long time and I really bit the bullet recently. It may, basically removes the pole and uh, creates an almost drone shot. You can point it forwards as you can see here and then during the actual editing software you can sort of spin it around whenever you want and it's very customizable. I actually used it on my motorbot yesterday and that is a fantastic uh, area to use it and you get some amazing shots definitely just needs a bit of practice as uh, you can be a little bit close to things. I've seen a few creators 
I've put it in maybe the wrong place. I've definitely put it in the wrong place a few times recently. But here you can see it sort of creates a really nice shot. Obviously the sun's sort of flaring off it a little bit. But uh, generally it's a really cool shot. It'd be nice to be able to sort of spin it round to the side. Sort of the pole outwards. Uh, but obviously on these tighter lanes you're going to snag it up on a lot of branches. So this time I had to have it out forward. It's nice to be able to film ahead of you and you can actually split the two shots obviously at the same time so you've got one of you and one of the person in front and it's just a fantastic tool to have. It's capturing Jack there in the distance. You could actually zoom in if you needed to to view that um, but it's incredible how stable it really is. Here is a very steep sort of corkscrewing section down into the valley through the trees. It is obviously currently still the end of winter, you can see the blue skies coming and as I'm recording this it's the beginning of March and we cannot wait to get out of this rainy period and into some more sun. Uh, by the time this video has been up for a month I reckon there'll be leaves on these trees even though it's a lovely day. Time to go a little bit slower, obviously it doesn't look too bad here but these boulders and rocks are quite tall and it is a lot steeper than it looks. I'm letting Jack get some distance ahead of me because you know, if there's any slip or any loss of control, there's a lot more time to recover. Generally, I like to go up lanes. I find it much more interesting tackling the sort of traction and using the vehicle for how it's meant to be used. When you're going down a hill, you're just sort of controlling the speed of the engine, you're using the brakes, deciding what gear to be in and trying to not slip too much. I do find sort of scrabbling your way up things is a bit more exciting and uh, it requires more skill and uh, it's a bit like a sort of off-road hill climb, I'd say. Now it's our turn to head down this sort of corkscrew section. It is uh, quite gnarly and very wet and as you can see there's a lot of slate exposed and um, even though there's quite a wide lens um, you can't quite see how narrow it is. I'm not too worried about scratching Boris and thankfully this one there aren't too many bushes to be sort of graunching down the side of the car but you do get a cool view there with us and Jack in the view as well. Always nice to have a little breather. Unfortunately, I didn't bring a flask this time and I didn't have any milk to make tea, but we'll definitely go and sort that out later. Onwards and upwards, I would say. This one was a sort of quite steep and very rocky, rock and rolly from side to side. There were ruts on each side alternating so you could get cross axled a little bit. Jack had the camera attached to his here, as you can see and then we were behind being able to film us with the 360 as well. I always say it, I think I'll have to say it every time I make a film, the camera doesn't do justice of either the steepness coming up the hill or also the steepness from side to side when you are on the ruts. Um, it definitely felt pretty, pretty gnarly there and as you can see the snorkel's getting quite close to the bank. Uh, I think um, the tires are starting to slip there but both trucks just doing it with ease. It's nice to be able to see your truck from the outside every now and then. It's rare that uh, anyone else drives it so when you do get a shot of it you can sort of assess how it looks, how it's uh, handling and the first thing that came to my mind were those DRLs looking really nice there. Um, DRLs are nothing, something I'd never really considered before these ones were available and I'm really happy with them actually, those straight lines look really nice and neat and the lights when they're illuminated are very classic looking and just a sort of upgraded OEM sort of look. I'm impressed, you can see it's rocking around here but this was rocking around a hell of a lot more than it even looks, I'm amazed you can even still see it to be honest. Here we're just coming up on a big boulder, you'll see the front right tyre lift up and then bang down onto the sill. Thankfully managed it with these but um, was definitely a big gnarly boulder in the way. Thank you. 
So right now we're heading down our final couple of lanes of the day before we head into Tavistock. But this one definitely was one to remember. It is sort of linking two of some winding B roads. And there's some really crazy, quite steep sections that don't look it on camera, but they are very, very steep. It was both me and Sophie in the car at this time and uh, Jack liked to explain these lanes as driver scarers and as Sophie isn't the biggest off-roader that definitely scared her but um, these were good fun as I said before you can get a bit stagnant doing the same lanes over and over again so it was really nice to be able to try some fresh and quite difficult lanes. So thankfully Jack's going to go first to show us how it's done. You have to sort of dodge the cars on the main road, which is a bit of a daunting experience, and you're straight in down to the almost vertical slope. So Jack making it look really easy there. He's got the long travel shocks from uh, OME and the Gwyn Lewis pin-to-pin -pin kit. Really nice bit of travel on the suspension, but now it's our turn. So there was our live commentary looking at that. So let's take a look at it again from a few different angles as we were recording on them. There's a big long cross pipe going across it there and I accidentally drove along it a little bit too much which definitely cross angled us and we were sort of hanging there in midair for a little bit. The beauty of the Insta360 you can sort of see the car wallowing from side to side and balancing there but as it touched the tyre down we just sort of rode it down and sort of let it do its thing and that was definitely a good bit of fun. So Skippy there is just handling the last obstacle of the day. Bit of a lumpy section that cross axles you quite easily, very steep. And obviously it's not going to look as bad. And uh, I think we manage it pretty easily. Just up over there, avoiding the tree. And as you see, we're joining back up with the B road. <laughs> Gee! <laughs> <laughs> it's terrifying, isn't it? I, was like, okay, I didn't know whether to be like on engine braking or like brakes. So I did oh. the brakes and it was just like, <laughs> I could hear all the springs going like, toing, toing, toing. Toing. <laughs> It's super intimidating. You, you couldn't go back up, could you? No way. Yeah. Like, <laughs> those two lanes are some of my favourite because yeah. how it's like sketchy. Yeah, and then it's it like. It's so like that, aren't they? They're as you can see, we were definitely still slightly adrenaline fueled from that cliff face that we just left. It was an absolutely brilliant day and that was our final lane. Now we're going to head into Tavistock for some lunch, but before the end of the video, listen to this demand exhaust. So here we are in Tavistock then and it marks the end of our day. Thank you all so much for watching this slightly different video. Thanks to Jack for leading us round, Pete for finding the lanes in the first place, Sophie for getting scared and Katie for leading us through everything with her notes. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers.